Hey, everybody. I am back again for another installment in Microvellum Made Easy. And uh, we've covered cut parts, we've covered products, we've covered sub assemblies, we've covered materials. And this time I want to cover hardware. And hardware is actually a much bigger topic that I can cover in one video, but I want to cover the basics, the Microvellum Made Easy version of hardware. And so uh, what I'm going to do is walk us through how to make uh, hardware, add a hardware to your library with some associative machining. So just a one-off piece of hardware. In this case, we're going to do a hook. Um, in other videos, I'll cover things like poles and slides, and those have their own logic built into libraries. So they're a little bit more unique. Um, but if you find yourself just, hey, I need a hardware and I want to figure out how hardware works and how I can add it with some machining and get it to draw in 3D. That's what we're going to cover today. Um, and so to do that, uh, I'm going to start with where we left off in our last video, which was uh, through this series of we've made this cabinet from scratch. Um, and so we're going to add this to our library and stick it in this cabinet somewhere. Um, I just picked this because this is a 3D drawing I have, and it's pretty simple. We just need two holes associated to it. So the first step is uh, is having a 3D drawing, it's having a 3D drawing that, that, you know, works. And so in this one, I went actually into a graphics folder and found this hook from another library, and I'm going to add it here. Um, again, we're still working in the foundation library. This is a metric version, but everything I'm going to show you applies in whatever version of library you're in. So um, I am also going to do all this at the project level, but once you do it at the project level, you can save that back to the, the template level and uh, make it work. So the first step is to save this drawing. And you'll notice um, if you just go to help browse to factory data, you should have a folder here called graphics. And that's where your um, hardware is. And if you go into graphics, there'll be a hardware folder. And you'll probably see there are a bunch of files already in there. So, and they have this prefix 2D underscore and then 3D underscore. We're just going to focus on the 3D drawing. Um, and the important part is to match this formatting as much as possible. And so if you get a 3D block, um, a lot of times I would recommend just opening one of these files that you know works and starting with that. Uh, mine already happens to be named this, but I am going to just save this as, assuming like I had downloaded this CAD block from somewhere. So I have saved this to my graphics folder, um, 3D underscore hook ceiling 580. So I've got my drawing now. And something that's important is that I get, I'm going to go ahead and copy the exact entire file name, because I'm going to need to reference that in my hardware to get the drawing to come in. And I'm going to close this. And I'm going to go to my spec group. I'm going to go into my material file here. I'm going to go to hardware. And we're going to add a material. And I am just going to paste this and Oops. I'm going to call this hook ceiling 580. And then you'll look here in this associative drawing name. Uh, we're going to paste this. There's a drawing found that matches the hardware now. So you'll notice there is a little bit of a note here uh, that popped up. I can get it to pop up again. The drawing name here will be used unless there's a drawing found that matches the hardware name. So technically it will find this drawing because I use the same name, but I like to put in the exact drawing file here. Um, for like poles and some other things, you can actually put in a 2D elevation block name. We're not gonna worry about that today. We're just gonna get it to draw right in 3D and get the machining. Okay. So let's um, just start here. I've got a hardware and I've got a drawing on it. 
let's see if we can get that hardware to draw in our product first. So to do that, I am actually going to go um, into my part properties and go to hardware. And I am going to pick this guy. And so now I have, I was able to pick, as you saw here, which I might've gone through that too fast. I go take you straight to my hardware file and I was able to pick this, this hardware that I just created. And so I need a quantity. I'm gonna put just a quantity of one. Um, and I need an X, Y, and Z origin. And so I am going to try and just to get this to draw on the outside left side of my cabinet. I, I'm gonna put it at zero. So my X origin is my distance from the left of my product origin, and I want it to be right on the face. So let's just start with zero. And Y is my distance from back to front. And as we learned before in our products, negative Y comes forward into the cabinet. And I'm just gonna do equals negative depth divided by two. So I want it to be in the middle of the depth of my cabinet. And Z, I want it to be in the middle of the height. So I'm gonna do equals Height divided by two. And let's just see what we get. Um, that I've got it showing exactly where I want, but I don't have machining yet. So one thing I want to look back real quick is we've got the hardware here and the bare minimum at this point that I need is I need a quantity, X, Y, Z origin, and I need this associative rotation angle. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my material file. And we're going to go to this hardware that we had before. And I am going to go to machine tokens. And so we don't have any in here yet. And I'm going to add a new token. And I want to do a drilling operation. So we want to drill the two screw holes. And so there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, you could just add a, a token for each individual hole, just do one hole each. Or what I'm gonna show you is we can actually do one token for two holes. Um, so you've got X, Y, Z, and then you've got N, X, Y, and a distance between the holes. And so what that allows you to do is say, what is my start X and Y? And then what is my end in the distance between them? So um, actually, I need to check some distance between these. So we want two holes. And we want them um, spaced. Looks like 22 and a half apart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my X. We're going off of center line since I have my origin centered on this. We're going to go um, negative half of that. So negative 11, actually 11.25, I think it was. And Y is going to stay zero. We're only going yeah. X, negative X positive. And uh, we are going to go, the diameter is going to be a five millimeter hole. End X, we're going to go positive 11.25. And Y is the same distance between the hole. We're going to say is 22.5. And we'll see how that works. So now that I have that, I should be able to redraw my product and see what happens. All right, so you see I've got our holes here now. And you notice they're going top to bottom instead of left to right. So that means I have my X and Y's flipped. Sometimes it just takes trial and error um, on this, but you'll get there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my hardware and I am going to reverse this. I'm gonna put zero in my X. I'm going to make my Y what my X's were.
All right, so now you see my holes, my machining line up with my holes on my hardware block. Um, so I can go to a side view and you'll see everything lines up. I can go to a front view and you'll see it's on the side of my cabinet. Um, and now that I have that hardware set up, I can put that essentially wherever I want. So I can go back here to my hardware and I can copy this. And let's say I want to put another one on the right side. Well, all I got to do is change my X origin. So I could do equals width. And you'll see that now it's on the opposite side where I put it. What if I wanted to rotate it? And I want it to be 90 degrees rotated. Um, I can simply go into my associate rotation angle and change rotate it by 90. And that associate rotation is associative to the part that it's touch touching. So now these are rotated um, all the way around. Um, and say I wanted this to be on the inside of the cabinet underneath this front stretcher. Well, similarly, I could take it and say, okay, X origin. Now I want to be equals width divided by two. My Y origin needs to be equal to negative depth plus 48, maybe. And my Z equals height minus, let's see if we can find. Uh, minus 19. Let's try that. All right. So you'll see here's a good lesson. It's, it's showing up, but it's red, which means that it's not touching a part. So I am too low. And I need to be... Okay, so my material is 16 millimeters, not 19. Okay, so I just need to change this to minus 16 so that it's actually still touching the part. Oop, not quite. Let's try 15. So it's into the part. All right, now we're in business. So now we're on the underside of this guy. And so ultimately, that's really all there is to making a hardware. And the beauty of it is that you get a 3D drawing that shows where you, you need it. You can put associative machining with it. So wherever you put it, the machining goes. But also you get a part that comes out on your hardware reports when you process. Um, and so you can do this like this opens up a world of opportunity when you have figured out how to make associative hardware. Uh, I've used this for sinks. I've used this for grommets. I've used this for poles and handles and hooks. Um, anything, even on to like negative hardware, things like um, tight joint fasteners or dog bones or what you might call um, countertop fasteners that attach to tight joints together or to field joints together. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can do with them. So hardware is a very powerful thing once you figure out how to do this. And I hope that this helps understand how to utilize hardware. Um, I would appreciate if you guys leave some comments on things, questions you have, things like this that you'd like to see me do videos on in the future. Um, and give me some feedback on uh, what you'd like to uh, see videos on that uh, I can help you figure out how to make microvellum easy for you. Thanks.